Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecturer in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate a Z-score in Excel 2010. So a Z-score, as we know, is uh, used when we want to take a one-sample Z-test. We want to be able to see if a sample is representative of a population. So it's a single sample in a single population. Here in my spreadsheet here, I've got some figures from a paperclip factory. These are boxes of paperclips which should have a minimum of uh, 1,000 um, clips in each box. So I can't count every single box in the factory, so I've taken a sample uh, of 15 boxes that you see listed here in column A, and you can see the numbers of paper clips counted in each box. And I want to know then if this uh, sample is representative of the population. In other words, I want to be able to uh, conclude from this sample that the population uh, average is a thousand paper clips uh, per box or more. So the first thing I need to do with my z-test is to set out my null and alternate hypothesis, and that's fairly straightforward. My null hypothesis, the HO, is that mu, the population mean, is less than or equal to 1000. And my alternate hypothesis, the HA or H1, is that my mu, the population mean, is greater than 1000. In order to calculate the z-score, I need a formula, and this is the formula over here on the right-hand side in the pink box, where z uh, it looks like a complicated formula, but in fact it's relatively straightforward. z-score is equal to uh, x-bar, which is the mean of the sample, minus mu, which is the mean of the population, so that's relatively straightforward. That's our numerator. And then we divide that by what's called the standard error, and this is calculated by um, the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, the number in the sample. So there's four pieces of information we need here before we can calculate the z-score. So we have to work out the sample mean, the population mean, the standard deviation, and the number of uh, counts in our sample. So let's start over here. Uh, I've got my um, uh, spreadsheet already lined up for these values. Now my population mean, in fact I don't know what that is, but because my null hypothesis is stating that it should be a thousand, I'm going to put one thousand in here as the population mean. Now sample mean is relatively straightforward. I'm going to use Excel's uh, formula ribbon here. So I want to use this to calculate the average of the sample. So I'm going to click on more functions select statistical and uh, just second from the top here is the average function so I'll click on that and then I select my range so I just with my mouse just select a range of values here in column A it's A2 to A16 and click on OK in my function arguments box and I can see here that my uh, sample mean of the values you see here in column A is 1006. Now we can see that that's actually higher than the population mean but as yet we don't know if that's a significant value. Next, we've got to calculate the standard deviation of the population, and this is where we hit our first problem, because we don't know that what the standard deviation of the population is. So uh, we can, in z-score, uh, in a normal distribution, we can substitute the population standard deviation with the sample standard deviation. So that's, again, relatively straightforward to calculate. I'm going to use Excel's formula ribbon, click on more functions. It's a statistical function, and I'm going to scroll down here until I get to the S's where there is uh, standard deviation options. Now, there's two options here, stdev.p, which is the standard deviation for the population, and stdev.s, which is the standard deviation for the sample. So we're looking for the sample, so that's the one I select, so click on that. And in my function arguments window over here, um, I'm going to select my values uh, in column A again, for my sample deviation, uh, standard deviation, and click OK. So we can see the standard deviation of the sample is 13.7865, and we're going to use this in our formula in place of the population standard deviation. N is fairly straightforward. Uh, we can see, uh, just looking at it, that the, the values are 15, but again, I'm just going to use uh, Excel's count function, C-O-U-N-T, and in brackets, just again, select all the same data with my mouse. So this is what I've been selecting, all the same data each time. And that counts, and it should give me a value of 15. It's always a good idea to use formulas in case you um, um, increase or decrease the number of samples. So now I've got my four elements in my formula over here in the pink box. So it's now time uh, to calculate the z. So I'm just going to do this in, in uh, three parts. The first step is I want to work out the numerator, which is the um, sample mean minus the population mean. So that's straightforward enough. So type in equals the sample mean. So click on that box minus the population mean and press enter. And we can see that our numerator has a value of six. 
Our denominator is slightly more awkward. Uh, we want to take the standard deviation and divide it by the square root of n. So again, take in equals, and our standard deviation is 13.78, so put that in there. Uh, put in the division sign, and we want to now use the square root function to calculate the square root of n. So this is a maths function. I want to scroll down here until I get to uh, sqrt. And I need to insert a value in here, and I'm looking for the square root of n, the value of 15. So select that box and click OK. So we now have our numerator and our denominator, and just on a separate line down here, I can calculate the z score, which is simply um, our numerator, which is 6, um, divided by our denominator, 3.55. And that gives us a z score of 1.66683. Now, what does that mean? Over here on my right-hand side, I've got the common re the rejection regions for common values of alpha. Um, our values of alpha here are uh, 0 0.01, representing 10%, 0 0.05, uh, uh, representing 5%, and 0 0.01, representing 1%. Now, normally, we would go for 5% uh, significance, so that's the middle one here. And um, we want to, uh, we've seen from our null hypothesis that this is a one-tail test. And our value of 1.66683, uh, we can see in our middle over here, slightly exceeds the critical value uh, in the upper tail at the, f at the 0 0.05 value of alpha. Uh, the z there is uh, 1.645, and if our value is greater than that, we can then, that falls into the rejection region, and we can reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternate hypothesis. And the alternate hypothesis is that the population mean is greater than 1,000, so therefore our z-score here is telling us uh, that our sample here is good, that our, uh, based on this sample, that our population has an average of a thousand paper clips per box or more. So that's how you calculate a Z-score in Excel. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.